Hi, I'm Pete and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. Today we're moving our second batch of broiler chicks out onto pasture and we're moving chickens all summer from brooder to pasture, then every day on the pasture, and then from pasture to butcher shed. And we've developed some labor saving inventions to move the chickens more easily and that's what this video is all about. This is a big day for the chicks. Until now they've been in this warm brooder house but now they're going out and they're going to have to endure a few cold nights. So they're going to have to adapt. We've been holding the chicks in the brooder for four weeks instead of three weeks these days because we've had some uncommonly cold weather. At four weeks these guys are in their ugly duckling teenager phase. They have bare spots and their feathers can't quite catch up to how fast they're growing. But as they are out on pasture and they get bigger they'll start to feather up more and look more like a regular chicken. They'll never look like a layer chicken with full fluffy feathers because these guys are bred to grow meat not feathers. The first labor saving invention is this, a piece of plywood. When we move chicks we want to minimize stress and that means we don't want to be chasing them around so we use this simple paddle to run them to one side of their brooder pen and then I can pick them up easier. And then we just use a regular old plastic tote to load the chicks out of the brooder and bring them out to the wagon. Grabbing chicks is hard, especially if they have room to scoot around. So in the first year we raised chickens, I designed this chicken mover wagon. It's a wagon we had laying around already and it just has some simple modifications on it, which I'll show you. We thought about buying the crates, the plastic crates you can buy, but I didn't like the idea of leaving uh, chickens at butcher time in them for any extended period of time because they're really cramped and sometimes they can't even stand up in them. The other issue with the boxes is they're expensive. They're like 50 bucks a piece and heck, I probably got less than 50 bucks in this whole thing, the modifications to the original wagon. It just has a plunger in the front, like a movable fourth wall that brings the chickens back. And then it's got two arms that extend through the back of the wagon, so we just take them and we can pull the plunger back, gather the chickens in the back of the wagon, and then pick them out easily. I made a lid for the wagon out of 2x4 welded wire mesh fence with a lid in the back that's hinged, so you just flip it up and you take the chickens out. This wagon's especially useful on butcher day because we can load the ready to butcher chickens in here, pull the wagon up to the butcher shed, and then as we're butchering, we just pull the plunger back to keep the chickens right within easy reach. We use this wagon at least twice, three times a week all summer long because we're butchering twice a week and bringing chickens in and out of the field. So this gets a lot of use and eventually manure accumulates in the bottom of it. One of the nice things about it is the sides pull up. This is what's called a stake rack side. So you can pull the different sides up and then just hose it out and push the manure out of the wagon. Easy to clean. The next invention was invented for me by Joel Saladin. We use his design for our open bottom pasture pens. And I have his book, Pastured Poultry Profits, and I spent a lot of time closely examining those fuzzy black and white photos and reading his narrative really carefully on how they're built. Because the key thing with these is to make them as light as possible. And that means examining every detail. For instance, I see these things built out of two by fours sometimes. Oh my gosh, they're so much heavier with two by fours rather than using the one by lumber that we use. So I'll go through and show you how these are built. The whole structure of these is built out of one bys, one by threes and one by twos for the bracing, all pressure treated. 
The bracing is the key to keeping it strong, not using big giant chunks of lumber. There's also a cross wire that we added that runs from here back along the ground that keeps the middle of the pen from sagging too much. And I have a piece of all thread on one end so I can tighten it up as the wire stretches and bring the center of the box back up. The boxes measure 10 foot wide by 12 foot long. The back half of it is completely roofed and completely sided. Then the front half has chicken wire on all sides. This one removable panel here is solid roof. This other removable panel is chicken wire. I'm sure you've seen these pens before. The thing that I would change about these pens is the chicken wire. I'm constantly having to restaple the edges of it repair tears. We've had raccoons stick their hands through it. I would definitely go to hardware cloth for these and someday I'll recover them when I get the time. It's extra money up front but it'll last a lot longer than this real thin chicken wire. We use Poisson drinkers and these things are the bee's knees. We've had these since we started farming. They're completely disassemblable for cleaning. You can buy spare parts but we've never needed any and you can clean the buckets out. This is just a hole with a tube in the bucket with the tube pushed in. They work great. We rarely have any problems with them. The only problem that does develop over the summer is gradually algae will build up in the hose and in the metering mechanism. So we've got to take that apart and blow it out once in a while. I've talked about our feed troughs before and I'm so cheap there's no way I'm going to pay 50 bucks for a five foot feeder off of the website. So I make these out of steel gutter. And it's just a heavier gauge steel gutter that you can special order from a hardware or lumber yard. And then I use pop rivets, make the pieces, pop rivet it together. It's got a piece of oak for the handle. I probably got five bucks in each of these. So they work great. Sometimes the chickens will hang out inside of them and we have to pull them out. But otherwise, it's a good investment to just make your own. This is a homemade dolly we use to move the pasture pens. Again, I studied Joel Saladin's photographs really closely because getting the proportions of this thing correct so it acts as a giant lever is really important. It's also really important to make these things very light. This is about one inch tube. We have a second one that we made out of the next size larger tube and I won't even use it anymore because it's too heavy to drag around the field. Keeping things light is the key to saving your back all summer long. And they're really easy to use. You just put them down, lift up the back, and the front is lighter because there's less steel on the front. So as long as your bucket isn't full of water, they're pretty easy to pick up and then you can just pull them ahead. For pulls on these boxes, we use old garden hose and then there's a hole drilled four foot apart in the front and we run wire and then the garden hose over it makes it easy to pick it up and pull. This is in need of replacement. We have one on the front and one on the back. We tried putting ones on the sides so that when the boxes had to turn, which is always the most difficult maneuver in the field, when you get to the end and you got to turn around and come back the other way, we tried pulling them side to side, but it just doesn't work. So now we kind of work them around in a big loop instead of an about face turn. When butcher day arrives, it's extremely important to be gentle with the chickens and not get them too agitated because when they're at butcher weight, they can easily break a wing or a leg running around, flapping around. So we don't want to be chasing the chickens around in the pen. And that's what I use these plywood paddles for. The first time we caught chickens, we made a little leg hook and we were crawling around in the pens trying to hook the chicken's leg. And oh my gosh, it was a nightmare. These make it so much easier. And again, they're just pieces of 3 8 inch plywood. I take the long one first and imagine a bunch of chickens are in here. I wish we had ones ready to butcher, but they're just not there yet. I slide it in and kind of sweep the chickens around like this and set this one in here. And now I've got the chickens caught over in this half of the box. And then I take the short one and put it in here and sweep the chickens around again. And now I've got all the chickens caught in that quarter of the box. I can step in there with the wagon backed up and just load them in one by one. No flapping involved. When you add all these little labor saving inventions up, they amount to a less sore back for my employee here at the end of the day. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> 
I hope this video was informative and thanks for coming and joining us. I'll see you next time.